Hello and welcome again. In this sequence of videos, we will discuss uh, the internal structure of DES or DES. And so um, we have to do it in several because the internal structure is a little, it's a lot more complicated than the one we saw for the stream cipher. Now, remember what the DES is. This is a block cipher who takes uh, 64 bit blocks of plain text and transform that into cipher, uh, cipher text, which is here on this side, called that Y, the cipher text, and it's gonna be 64 bits. And the key for this uh, uh, desk, this encryption algorithm, is 56 bits. Now, this box that you see here that are marking that with the arrow, that's the, that box is what's gonna do the, the whole computation of encryption decryption. Now, what is the in internal structure? So I'm going to divide it into several parts. So the first part is going to be this. When the uh, plain text come in, or the block of 64 bits comes in, the first thing that is done here is this block. And by this block, I, I'm going to represent that. Just let's put the block. And this is going to do something here to this, to this plain text. And what it actually does is a permutation. So what we saw earlier. So let me write that down. So that block that is there, this block here, uh, this one, this one is a permutation. Permutation. And you remember, if you remember what it was, is basically what it is, is gonna take this uh, block of 64 bits and it's gonna rearrange them in some, in some way in another 64 uh, block of bits, of course. Now, after that's done, after that permutation is done, it's gonna come in here, into this other black box. Now, for the moment, I'm not gonna explain what this box does, because that's, again, a little bit more complicated. Now, this box here, what's gonna do is gonna use the key to encrypt whatever block came here from this, from this permutation, from this one here, the permutation, you take the original 64 block, you do the permutation here, and they send this to this block that's gonna do the encryption with the key. After that encryption is done, which I will explain later, then it comes out and it does another permutation in that case. So this is another permutation, that one over there. This is permutation again, permutation. And remember, all that is, is just rearrange the bits in that block, in the 64-bit block. Now, um, this permutation and this permutation that I hear, the initial and the final permutation are closely rel related. Uh, we're going to use this notation. This permutation that is done first, the one that is done here to the plain text, the 64-block bit, that's going to... We're gonna call it the initial permutation, and I'm just gonna write it down like this. I'm gonna call that I P, and which that means is initial initial permutation. This permutation at the end, so once be right before you get the cipher text, that's the final permutation, but it's called I P inverse. And the reason it's called I P inverse, let me write that down. I P inverse and the inverse I'm gonna denote it with a minus uh, here a negative exponent minus one there what that's gonna do is it's gonna do the opposite to whatever the initial uh, permutation does so what I mean by that is this if the initial permutation does something the final permutation is gonna undo whatever this is doing of course uh, if this initial permutation and final permutation that's the only thing that existed in the uh, encryption, then this, this won't do anything because if this initial if an initial permutation does something and this one undoes whatever this does, then of course you're gonna get again the plain text. But of course something else is going on here inside this box. So we have an initial permutation. I'm just gonna call it like this. I'm gonna call it without the dots. I'm gonna call just IP. That's the initial permutation. And I have the final permutation. We call it IP inverse, which is doing. Uh, the inverse, this guy is undoing whatever the IP is doing here. Notice, before I continue on with this and explain what the initial permutation are actually doing, notice that the key here has no role in these two permutations. It doesn't matter what the key is, this permutation is going to do whatever it does independ 
independent of whatever the key is. And you, is this one too. This permutation does whatever it does independent of the key. The key is going to come into place into this algorithm just inside this box. And what I say early is that I'm not going to explain this now. We're going to go, of course, into the details, what's going on in here, but later. So let's let's go ahead and, and see what actually this is doing, this initial permutation. So how does that work? So let's go ahead and, and look at that. So what's going to do is this. So imagine that what I have here is this block that you see there that I'm marking that with the arrow. This is the 64 block of plain text. So this one right here. So imagine they have one, two, three, four, up to 64 bits. In that square that you see there, I'm going to have either a zero or a one, right? Because this is a, a 64 uh, bit block. And that this block here correspond to whatever block comes in, in here into the, the cipher. So this initial permutation we're talking about, what it's going to do, the initial permutation of IP is going to take this zeros and ones that are organized from 1 through 64 and it's going to rearrange them here. So it's going to rearrange them in other order. That's what the initial permutation is going to go is going to do. And remember that this initial permutation is not affected by the key. It's independent of whatever the key is. So let's see how we're going to represent this permutation. Now there is a sta there are many ways in which you can represent that permutation. One way to represent them is to represent the permutation is by looking at a table. And that table will tell me how to transform uh, these bits here into these bits here. Basically, it's going to tell me where should I place the bit that is here in position 1. I should send it somewhere over here, this bit in position 2, or maybe send it somewhere over here, something like that. That table is going to tell me wh exactly what I need to do. So let's look at the table. So how does... Uh, IP work, and IP in this case is initial permutation. So initial permutation, it works uh, with respect to this table. And that table is very important here. Uh, the table is going to tell you what, how it's going to transform the 64-bit block into another 64-bit block by rearranging the bits. And the way you're going to read this is, is the important part. So it's, it's very important to read this correctly. You're going to read this as you read in English. So you're going to start with the first row, and then you're going to read from top. So I'm start here at the top, left to right. So exactly as you read in English. So you write like this, like this, and then continue exactly below, next, and next. If you look at this box here, this box contains all the numbers from 1 through 64. And what that means is this denoted the positions, the positions of the bits in this in this block. Let me go back here. And this block is denoted this positions. So when I look at this table and I read it like this, from left to right, top to bottom, if this number 58, what this is saying is that the bit in position 58 will be transformed into position 1. So 58, let me let me mark that with an arrow maybe. So the bit in position 58 will be transformed, will be taken to position 1. Similarly, the bit in position 50 will be transformed into uh, the position 2. So the one in uh, position 50, it was going to be transformed into the position 2. So that's how this table is going to rearrange. And again, what you do is, you read this from top to bottom, so the whatever is in position 52 is going to go to position 1. Whatever is in position 50 is going to go to position 2. Whatever is in position 42 is going to go to position 3. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, right? So all of this is going to give you how you're going to transform the plain text, the 64 block bit, into the transform a 64 block bit in that initial uh, permutation. Now let's look at some example and see this. Let's see how that actually works. So, so suppose I have I have here this 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 is my plain text of 64 bits. I have them here. Let's say I want to know where uh, the number one is gonna go. So let's look at that. 
Before we actually do the, the transformation, let me assume that we actually have some uh, zeros and ones in here in this uh, block of plain text. Let's say, for example, I have a one over there, partition one. I have a zero here. Let's say I have a zero again, and I have a one. And let's say, of course, I cannot draw all of them because I don't have enough space here to put them all 64 bits. But let's assume that we have this four here, and then at the end, let's say, for example, this is just an example, a zero, a zero, a one, and a one. Okay, so let's start with the number one. Let's see how this uh, this whole block is going to transform into the other block using the initial permutation. So what I need to do is, okay, I need to know where this block or where this one is going to go in what position. So this one is in position one. So what I have to do is I have to go back to my table and I have to look for the number one because that's the position one. So let's scroll up here and see what position one is. I'm going to use another color. So let's, for example, use um, this uh, uh, yellow. So if you look at this table right here, you look, have to look at the number one because that position has to be transformed into something. So that number one is right here. As you, you can see there in the arrow. So I'm going to mark that with uh, yellow. So let's say this is the yellow part here. This is the one. All right, I, I have to know what position is that. So basically what I need to do, unfortunately, is to count. So I have to count, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight, right? So that what is that position that if you actually count, that's gonna be position 40. And why is that? Well, we can just think think about it this way. I have eight positions here, another eight, another eight, another eight. So I have and another eight here. So this one is in what row? One, two, three, four, five. So that position has to be 40 because it's eight times five. Or if you prefer, you just can count one, two, three, four, and so on until you get to this one. So what that is saying, because this block is in position 40, the number one, I have to transform whatever is in position one into the position 40. So let me explain that. So this guy right here, let me use another color. So this guy right here, this one, will be transformed in position 40 in this new um, block. So let me mark this. This is the position 40. This will be position 40. And so this block will be sent to that position according to that transformation. So what number goes in there? Well, the number that goes in there is, of course, whatever is in here in this block. In this case, it's a 1. So I'm going to put a 1 there. OK, let's do a couple of more couple more of these things. So let's say, for example, I want to know where uh, this two, the this the position two is going to go. So where this zero in position two will go. Again, what I have to do is I have to look at the position two and see where is that in the table, in the representation of my permutation. So I go back here and I have to look for the number two. So if you can see there, number two is right at the end of this row here. That's the eighth position there in that table. So let me use again uh, the yellow. So I'm going to mark that down as a 2 there. That's where 2 is. And because that 2 is in position 8, if you count to the first row, that means that uh, the bit in position 2 will be transformed into position 8. So what that means is, let's go back here and let's use again the same color. So this bit here that you see, the bit 2, will be transformed into position 8. So let's assume that position 8 is somewhere over here. Of course, I'm not doing this scale. So let's say this is position 8, somewhere over there. So that means this bit will be transformed here. And what that does is basically uh, just take whatever is here in this bit and put it in that block. So that will be a 0. All right, and, and so on. So if I want to know where actually this zero is going to go, which is in position three, I have to go back to the table and see where th three is in that table to, uh, to know where exactly in what position that should be. So that that's how uh, I'm going to populate this whole thing. So once I know what my 64 bit block is, applying the permutation is basically just, as you can see, is just rearranging this bit in here and the way, the, the way you rearrange them is by just looking at the table. 
Let's just do one more here. Let's do, for example, uh, the last one, uh, 64. The, the, the very last one. The one in position 64, so this one here. So where is uh, 64 uh, transforming to? In what position? So let's, uh, to do again, to do that, I have to go back and look at the table. So let's look at the table and see what 64 is. So let's look at the table here. 64. All right, let's look at 64 over there. I'm going to use the green again. If you can see here, I'm going to mark that with yellow. So it's here, it's in the fourth row, the first element of that fourth row, the one that you see there, that I'm marking with uh, yellow. If you count in what position that 64 is, it's going to be in position 25. Okay? So of all the position counting from here, remember you count from top to bottom, left to right. So it's going to be in position 25. That means, again, that the that bit in position 64 is going to be transformed into the position uh, 25. So if I go here at the, um, uh, my picture, let's see the 64. I'm going to use again the same. Let's use another color. Uh, 64 is going to be transformed into 25. So 25 is going to be here between between this 8 bit and then the 40 bit. So I'm going to put it somewhere over here. So let me use that color. Uh, that's going to be a 25 there position. 25 bit. And so that 64 is going to be transformed into that one over there into the 25. And of course, because uh, I have a 1 there, then I have to put a 1 inside that that little thing over there. So that's a 1. Okay, so that, that's actually how the permutation works. Of course, if you were to do this by hand, it will take you a very long time. And of course, this is done with the computer. Now, there are two ways to implement this. You can actually do it with software. And in software, actually, this takes a long time. Uh, it, it's not so that efficient to do permutation. But it's very efficient if you do hardware. What I mean by that is this. If you imagine that this is a, is a block of zeros and ones, doing a permutation is just throwing a wire from one position, from one block to another. So it's very simple to implement in software, but it's not, it's not so efficient in, uh, in, in hardware. It's very efficient, but it's not efficient in software. So this is actually how the initial permutation works. So it's actually taking that 64 uh, block bit and rearrange it again into zeros and ones here into another 64 block bit. And let me scroll up again, again to see the big picture of what the block cipher is. Let me scroll all the way up here. So what we did here is we took the 64 bit block, put it inside the cipher, we do the initial permutation, so it permutes the zeros and ones, and now it goes through this black, black box that is over here. And again, what I said is that we're going to look at this, this internal thing a little bit later because it's a lot more complicated than uh, the permutations here. Now, in the next video, I'm going to explain uh, exactly what happens with the, uh, this final permutation or the inverse of this permutation. So I'll see you in the next video.